It's an early morning of July 17, 2023. At approximately 3 a.m., the sudden explosion drove the railroad and road strands of the Crimean Bridge. The crucial supply route that connects the continental part of Russia with the occupied in 2014 Crimean Peninsula provides a convenient flow of supplies to the southern grouping of the Russian forces that is currently in the midst of repelling the Ukrainian 2023 counteroffensive. Therefore, the bridge is one of the priority targets for the Ukrainian military command. Це цілком законна для нас ціль. Відповідно до норм Женевської конвенції, інших норм міжнародного права, чинного законодавства, звичаїв, традицій ведення війни, це цілком законна ціль. Це незаконна побудова, по суті, на території України. Президент Зеленський особисто наказав зруйнувати цей шляхопровід. Recognizing its importance, Russians fortified the Crimean bridge, transforming it into one of the world's most heavily defended structures. Helicopter and ship patrols, along with air defense systems, are deployed for round-the-clock protection against potential threats. Improvements in defense were also made after previous attack to eliminate the chance of dangerous vehicles accessing the bridge. This is because on October 8, 2022, Ukrainians secretly loaded 15 tons of explosives, disguised as industrial film rolls, into a cargo truck intended to traverse the bridge, an explosive force equivalent of 21 tons of TNT. The detonation resulted in extensive damage, which yet was repaired as of July 17, 2023. Servicemen of the Security Service of Ukraine, who are tasked with bridge destruction, no longer expect that the structure can be attacked from the land, deciding that it's time to try to hit it from the sea. Можна відмітити, що по суті ми є фахівцями по Кримському мосту по тій причині, що вперше ми його вдарили 8 жовтня минулого року. І вдруге ми вразили міст 17 липня поточного року за допомогою відповідних морських дронів типу Сі Бейбі і зайшли ми в цей раз не суші, а зрозуміло з моря. Ukrainians designed an unmanned surface vehicle from scratch with the key requirements of traveling for over 800 kilometers and carrying at least 800 kilograms of explosives. The drone was created in less than a half of a year, receiving the name Sea Baby. It's controlled via satellite communication unit installed on board, allowing it to pass footage from the camera and commands from the operators across hundreds of kilometers. Unlike the Magura V, Ukrainian anti-ship drone developed earlier, Sea Baby is much larger, but slower, carrying up to 900 kilograms of explosives. For the operation against the Crimean bridge, Ukrainians assembled five such drones, correctly expecting that some of them would not reach the target. Two groups of drones, five in total, depart from the Ukrainian coast once the dusk falls on July 16th. In the command center, the drone operators are accompanied by Vasil Maluk, head of the security service of Ukraine himself, as well as the founder of the Ukrainian Sea Drone Doctrine, Brigadier General of SBU Ivan Lukashevich, and Commander of the Ukrainian Navy, Vice Admiral Oleksiy Neishpapa. In close coordination with the Ukrainian Defense Forces, the Mission Command also has access to real-time intelligence. Suddenly, they are warned by Ukrainian Air Force Command that drones are dangerously close to the area where Russian Su-27SM fighter jet patrols the skies. The decision is made to take a detour, so the route to Crimean Bridge extended by an extra 70 kilometers. Soon, the wolf pack of drones receives another warning about the Russian frigate, Admiral Essen, that sails directly on their course. In a few minutes, the ship, which claims the title of the flagship of the Russian Black Sea Fleet after the sinking of the Moskva cruiser, appears from the night on drone cameras. In the control room, tension arises as Admiral Essen is also an important target, as it is one of the few major Russian marine assets that carry cruise missiles actively used against Ukraine. Vasil Maluk, however, decides to stick to the plan. The drones approach the frigate unnoticed and sail around the oblivious ship. Once two groups of drones, now separated by a significant distance, reach the area near the city of Yalta, a new problem arises. The maneuvers exhausted the fuel of three out of five sea babies in the back and according to the updated calculations, they won't be able to reach the bridge. Therefore, Ukrainians decide to send them in the chase of the Russian ship, while the other two have to hit the bridge. The pursuit ends unsuccessfully, as three drones exhaust all their fuel before locating Admiral Essen, so they all are self-destructed to avoid capture. Finally, after 20-hour long operation, two Ukrainian drones reach the area of Kerch Strait, 
The passage below the bridge is guarded and a huge number of ships await permission to cross it. Russian military vessels, as well as civilian tankers, illuminate the area with their lights, so the drones have to stop and wait until the path forward will be cleared of most of the ships. Having the ability to precisely control the drones and see what is happening around them, operators are able to keep sea babies unnoticed. Under careful control of the operators, who have to bear one second delay in the picture transmission, the first drone starts accelerating towards the railroad portion of Crimean Bridge. Sea Baby, however, passes in between two supports as operators miss. The decision is made to quickly turn around and hit the road portion instead, as live cameras on the bridge might have recorded the attempted attack. In this case, Russians would use signal jammers with patrol boats and helicopters to find and destroy the drone before it fulfills its mission. After turning around, Sea Baby accelerates again ramming right into the bridge support. The explosion rocks the structure, damaging it. The lights go off, but Ukrainians assume that the attack is successful, so they switch to another drone that still waits nearby. The second sea baby approaches one of the supports of the railway bridge. First, Ukrainians want to hit the bridge right below the train locomotive, assuming it carries fuel, but eventually they decide not to pursue the train as it is likely empty as Russia delivers fuel to Crimea for their armed forces. The drone also accelerates and hits the railway bridge support, causing another large explosion. The cheer erupts in the command center as the mission is accomplished. Both road and railroad Crimean bridge strands were hit with significant damage. After the attack, Russians managed to use part of the road bridge in reverse mode. The railway bridge's great capacity was limited to five cars and only light civilian trains. This further narrows down the bottleneck of Russian supplies to the peninsula and the whole southern grouping of the forces. During the attack, two Russian civilians were killed in a car that was driving across the bridge. In conclusion, the second attack on the Crimean bridge succeeded similar to the first one, once again limiting Russian logistical opportunities. Even though the damage is repairable, the attack also was hit on morale, showing the inability of Russians to defend their own strategic objects against repeated attacks. The operation also highlighted the growing role of maritime drones as extremely useful assets against various targets. Pioneering in this technology, Ukraine showed that it can and will persistently use it to restore its territorial integrity.